previously that I had the pleasure of co-hosting in Bangalore in November of 2019. Who would have thought that it would be now straight January 21 and then PC 2021 and that too fully virtually. But then change is the only constant as they say. So welcome to this changed, invigorated, and reimagined NPC. The silver lining we've been able to access, hear, and speak to so many amazing people, illustrious leaders, and exceptional role models only because we are virtual and online. And this also opens a chance for everyone from around the world to be able to connect and join in. Welcome to NPC, whichever part of the world you're joining in from. Today, I have a dear friend a fellow Thai president, exceptional leader from the startup story of the region, and the omnipresent Rajan Anandan with me. Rajan, welcome to NPC. Thank you. Good Thank to you. see you Thank here. You to be here. Good to see you here. And um, you know, hopefully we'll have an interesting conversation over how the world has changed in the last one year. You know, Rajan, with a you know, most people know you, but just as a background, you've had successful career stops in some of the most well-known companies in the world, from Google, Microsoft, Dell, My McKinsey, and all of them in one single life, you know. So I'm sure you have a lot to kind of teach people, introduce to people, and then also have a situation where you are one of the most prolific angel investors and collector of some of the most edgy startup founders, especially some of whom I've had a personal interaction with. And then the complete change to go on to the most well-known and most experienced VC investment firm in the region, possibly in the world, Sequoia. And heading Sequoia Surge, which has meant a surge of very impressive cohorts of startups from South Asia. It seems like a very different take from the usual early stage support, which most VCs talk about. And as someone put it to me, it is more YC than VC. So what do you think has been the game changer in terms of strategy to attract and accelerate the best in business? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, PK, for uh, inviting me. It's uh, great to be back at NPC, usually in Bangalore, but this time online, virtually. Um, so look, I, what is, I mean, maybe, you know, like with Surge, right? Maybe I'll just talk a little bit about why we launched Surge and what it is. Um, so the reason we launched Surge was first, you know, um, it's very difficult as a seed stage founder in India or Southeast Asia to raise enough capital at seed to be able to get to series A. So as a result, what happens is most startups end up raising two or in some cases, three rounds of financing before they can get to raise this series A, right? So you'll raise sort of one or two crores, then you have to go raise three crores, then you have to raise another five or six crores. Uh, and as a result, you know, if there are two co-founders on a team, Team, one co-founder, all they're doing is kind of raising money, right? Uh, and 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 so that's the first issue, right? And when you don't have enough capital, you can't, you know, hire the right people and so on and so forth. I think second, despite all the progress that we've made as an ecosystem, uh, you know, we felt that there wasn't enough mentoring uh, and you know, enough sort of deep knowledge uh, sharing of what it really takes to build great companies and especially what you need to do in the early days uh, to be able to build a great company. Right. And the third was, look, there just aren't enough mentors. Uh, I think there's, uh, you know, despite all the progress we've made over the last decade in India, over the last five years in Southeast Asia. Uh, so how can we bring to, you know, how can we bring uh, real practitioners, other founders to really help mentor startups at the very, very early stages? And finally, you know, how can we make the uh, make the uh, the journey to raise a Series A much faster, right? It takes three, four, five months to raise a Series A. Uh, can we make that happen in a much shorter time frame? So as a result, that's sort of why we launched Surge, is try to address these, uh, call it structural gaps that we saw, structural challenges that we saw in the seed stage market uh, in India and Southeast Asia. So that then brings me to what is Surge. Surge is uh, essentially, look, it's a seed program uh, for Sequoia Capital in India. Uh, we focus on India and Southeast Asia, uh, we uh, invest one to two million per company uh, upfront, right? So that way, when a company comes into search, they actually have enough capital uh, to go one, two, sometimes even you know three years. Uh, but more importantly, it gives them enough capital to be able to build the right team uh, once they get to product market fit to be able to drive some reasonable growth uh, before they actually raise Series A. So that's the first one. Second one is we have a 15-week, very intensive 
uh, uh, sort of program, right? Uh, which is sort of when, when people talk about search, that's what they're really referring to, uh, which uh, which used to be entirely offline, uh, but now is entirely online, where we focus uh, PK on all the important aspects of company building, right? Uh, you know, how to get to product market fit, how do you build out product teams, how do you hire engineers, how do you think about GTM, how do you hire your first set of salespeople, uh, all the way through sort of how do you raise your next round of financing, how do you think about managing boards and so on and so forth. Um, so, so, so that really, is, so it's almost one way to think about it is sort of it's a founders academy uh, right so mm-hmm. that's part two. third part is look we with each startup we go very deep on two or three issues that are really important to them and finally whenever the uh, startups need to raise their series a uh, we have twice a year we run something called upsurge where we get 35 to 40 of the top series a investors in the world um, you know india southeast asia us uh, you know china japan etc uh, and instead of like a demo day we have one-on-one meetings so each startup gets to meet between 15 and 25 uh, investors who they have an interest in and where the investors have an interest in them. So so that's really what Surge is, right? And we are uh, currently in our fourth cohort. Uh, we to date have, uh, uh, you know, close to 70 companies, 150 founders uh, that have gone through Surge. And uh, I would say it's early days, but we're very encouraged with the uh, progress so far. Well, you know what, like uh, the, whole, the, the whole world is talking about your Sequoia Surge companies and I see them a lot. And I've had the pleasure of actually mentoring some of them who've ended up in search. What is it that uh, people, you know, kind of uh, come up with? Is there a a specific sector focus or a founder focus or is it a size focus? What is it that the filter works on? Yeah, so basically, um, uh, so we we are as Sequoia uh, PK, as you know, we are focused on tech and tech enabled companies. So obviously this is NPC. Uh, which is essentially a software products conference. Um, so anything that is tech and tech enabled, right? So we have a lot of large number of SaaS companies. Our current cohort is 17 companies. Uh, more than 50% of them are SaaS companies. Uh, more than 70% of them are actually building for outside of their country, uh, either for the region or for the world. Uh, so lots of sort of global from day zero companies or regional from day zero companies. So that's sort of SaaS and, and we can talk more about SaaS uh, PK if you want. Uh, mm-hmm. So what kind of SaaS companies we have? We have uh, consumer internet, we have ed tech, we have fintech, uh, we have digital health, uh, we have ag tech, uh, we have direct to consumer brands. So anything that is really tech or tech enabled, uh, all the way from pure software companies, deep tech companies, to uh, you know direct to consumer uh, brands, brands that are being built on Amazon uh, or on their web- own websites, and but building real sort of you know whether it's cosmetics or you know other categories like that. So it's a broad, broad spectrum. In terms of stage, look, we have uh, companies that are pre-launch all the way through companies that have launched and have some early signs of product market fit. Uh, so it's a it's a range. I mean, obviously the. Uh, given that it's a seed program, look, if uh, the, the simple way we think about it is if what you need to do is raise a few million dollars, uh, right, uh, to either launch the company and then get to product market fit, or you have launched, you have some early signs of product market fit, uh, and let's say you're trying to go from a half a million or a million dollars of ARR to let's say three, four million dollars of ARR before you raise a large Series A, you know, that those are the kinds of companies that actually come into uh, come into search, right? If you're already, you know, if you've already got significant traction, you raise a six million dollar round. Surge is too late for you. But outside of those companies, everybody else, it's, uh, you know, we have, I think, in this current cohort of seventeen companies, uh, PK, six of them were pre-launch when we decided to uh, invest with them, right? So, so we have actually quite a number of, uh, maybe about a third of our cohort is pre-launch. The other companies have all, all launched and have some level of traction. So which are the five sectors that you would talk about are the most attractive sectors or places where you're seeing the maximum amount of edgy, good quality companies coming out of? Yeah, so look, I mean, I mean, I guess we are not as uh, fast about edgy, right, uh, uh, PK. What we really want is, you know, extraordinary founders, uh, you know, who have very bold visions going after massive markets that are going to end up building enduring companies, right? Whether you're edgy or not is... Uh, sort of not really, <laughs> you know, relevant to us. Uh, you know, we want business builders who are going to build for the next 20 years, right? Um, look, I, I don't know whether there's five sectors, but I can tell you since it's NPC, uh, look, what, uh, uh, you know, we are now seeing a very, very broad spectrum of uh, sort of SaaS companies, right? And and in fact, as I, as I mentioned, like more than 50% of our current cohort is SaaS. So, um, so and, and, you know, if you think about it, uh, uh, PK, right? Uh, Freshworks is basically India to the US SMB SaaS, right? That's where they started. Right. 
you will right. have this product, right? So, so that's clearly one uh, one theme. Sort of call it India to the world or India to the US SME SaaS. Second one is uh, India to the US enterprise SaaS. So, you know, companies like Druva, Isotis, things like that. So, we're seeing companies like that. India mm-hmm. to the US, your enterprise focused, your you know, global from day zero. Uh, usually, you have one co-founder there, one co-founder here, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, you're there, meaning the US, one co-founder here. So, that's sort of the mm-hmm. second sort of SaaS theme. Uh, the, the, but now we, there are three other themes. So, those, you know, if you ask me up until about two years ago, you know, just about every SaaS company that came out of India, a PK was focused on one of those two themes, right? Either Correct. India to the world SME SaaS or India to the US enterprise SaaS. I mean, they're pretty much characterized 90% of SaaS companies that we were building. But now we've seen sort of three more uh, three more major themes in SaaS. These are sub-themes in SaaS, right? Uh, the first one is prosumer SaaS, right? There are 50 million, uh, 50 million prosumers around the world. Right, so we have a company called InVideo uh, in our second cohort of search. So the simple way you should think about InVideo is they're the Canva for video, growing like you know, growing like a, growing very very fast, several million dollars of ARR, uh, and this is going to be a you know massive company. Sanket, Sanket Shah. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Are you an investor? By the way, I did, yeah, yeah. mentor, the first early mentor. Oh my gosh. Okay. There you go. So, so yeah, you know, extraordinary, extraordinary company, right? But that, that's very interesting, right? Now you're building for prosumers. So you're talking about $10, $20 sort of output per month uh, type products, right? And, and very, very different sort of kind of business that you have to build. It's all digital distribution and so on and so forth. Uh, the, so that's sort of third segment. The fourth segment really is what I call India plus enterprise SaaS, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So if you look at it, you know, essentially it's building enterprise software for India, Southeast Asia and GCC. You and I have talked about this quite a bit, right? Yes. What a lot of people don't realize, uh, PK, is that if you look at the combined GDP of India, Southeast Asia, and GCC, it's about $8 trillion, right? It's it's Japan and the UK put together is what you have. And, and you know, I think we would all agree that if, you, if you're going after $8 trillion of an economic block, you can easily build a several hundred million dollar SaaS company. So, so, so we are actually uh, now making investments in companies that never ever want to go to the US, uh, but are actually starting in India. They uh, want to first build in India. And then because the customers, let's say in many Southeast Asian markets and even GCC are quite similar, uh, you know, they think that, you know, just across these three regions, you can actually end up building a large business, right? So companies like Clapillary, CleverTap, they all started with this sort of model, right? And and so that's sort of the fourth, uh, fourth sub sub theme. <laughs> And the fifth one really, uh, PK, is is India SME SaaS. Uh, so this is sort mm-hmm. of essentially building for the 50 million very small businesses in India. And Kata Book obviously led the way. They were in our first yeah. cohort of search. Yeah. We have a company called Pagar Book, which is in our current cohort of search. Pagar Book basically builds us very, very, uh, uh, very, very interesting uh, HRMS uh, uh, SaaS product. But for very small businesses, right? Companies that only employ three to five employees, how can they do payroll? How can they do, uh, right. you know, attendance and things like that? So, you know, basically launched less than twelve months ago. Now they're at over a million, uh, over a million employers and several million employees actually mm-hmm. using the product. It's been less than twelve months of launch, right? So, so these are sort of the five. Uh, five sub segments of SaaS that we see, uh, and then outside of SaaS, look, there are two other, right? There's Dev Tools, uh, right? So Postman obviously led the way in terms of becoming India's first Dev Tools unicorn. Uh, but in every cohort now, uh, we actually have several Dev Tools companies uh, uh, peaking, right? So so Dev Tools. Mm-hmm. And that test is in our current cohort. We have another company uh, outside of India called Mod.io that's actually developing tools for game, uh, you know, game developers. So, okay. so we think Dev Tools is going to be a big theme out of India. And then the last one I would say would be uh, sort of very focused sort of uh, uh, deep tech solutions, right? And and uh, uh, you know that are focused on. Uh, either vertically, uh, right, you're going after a certain vertical or uh, or are going to go after, let's say, horizontal sort of IoT, industry 4.0 type, uh, type solution. So those are, I would say, outside of SaaS, uh, you know, since this is NPC, uh, you know, I would say those are sort of the, the other big themes that, that we're seeing. So, you know, this year when the pandemic like came in, or last year now, the pandemic came in, suddenly there was a very big differentiation that happened in the way companies would behave, in the way investors would behave. Everybody was surprised, shocked, and some of them actually stopped doing what they were doing. And then we saw a complete turnaround where people found new ways of working, people found different methods of going online, for example, ed ed tech, um, you know, health tech, uh, collaboration. All these industries completely, you know, turned around. And they also turned around everybody else 
who was hanging on to the digital ecosystem. What has happened in terms of the investment industry? Do you see a change in the way you put money, a change in the way you suggest uh, founders spend money, or are we back to almost the normal or pre-COVID normal? Yeah, I think I think from an investor, uh, um, you know, quantum of investments, right? If you look at the full year, let's just focus on India since we are India, our NPCs in India rather, right? So if you look at venture capital funding in 2019, uh, PK, uh, it was 14.5 billion. For the full year of 2020, it was about 10 billion dollars, right? Uh, mm-hmm. A big part of that dip, by the way, was Q2, Q2, uh, which is uh, which is April, May, June quarter in India. Uh, VC funding was down by about 55 percent, but or even in Q4. Uh, funding was down maybe about 20, 25%, something like that. But I actually do think uh, if you look at sort of outside of the second quarter, April, May, June of 2020 quarter, uh, by Q3, by the way, Q3 was on par with Q3. Q3 2020 was on par in terms of dollars invested uh, with Q3 2019. Right? So I would say in terms of dollars, uh, they're back. I actually think, uh, uh, I don't want to make projections, but you know, if you ask me, 2021, India will probably get as much, if not more, venture capital than 20, 2019. Right? 2019 mm-hmm. benchmark was the highest ever at 14.5 billion. In terms of what investors look for, I say the 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 uh, the, the tolerance for deeply negative unit economics companies uh, is no longer there. Right? So if you're if you're mm-hmm. growing very fast. Uh, but your unit economics are terrible. It's going to be very difficult for you to raise funding, whether it's a Series A, B, C, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, so, so I would say the one big change has been, I think all investors really want to see positive unit economics, right? Obviously, at seed stage, a lot of companies we invest in are pre-launch, are too early, they haven't started monetizing. So there's no such thing as unit economics. But uh, so that's one. I think second, there's a, uh, especially at Series A onwards, there's a much more rigorous focus on deeply understanding whether there's product market fit or not, right? So if you're a SaaS company, let's say you're an enterprise SaaS company and your net revenue retention uh, is only like 105, right? That doesn't put you in a good light. Whereas if your net revenue retention is, let's say, 145, you know, that puts you in a really good light. So so I'd say there's a there's a sharper focus on the underlying sort of quality of the business, right? Because what we've seen, not just in the public markets, uh, but also in the pli- private markets, uh, uh, PK, as you know, is a massive flight to quality, right? I mean, everybody is looking oh, for those spike businesses. But that's not bad, Rajan. I think oh, that's a very good thing. It's sensible, which is sensible, correct? It's a very good thing. Actually, in India, you know, the single biggest impact of COVID on the Indian startup ecosystem, uh, yes, user growth has accelerated. Yes, interestingly, in many segments, revenue has accelerated. Is that the underlying unit economics have gotten much, much better, right? Uh, we today have very, very few companies that are burning a ton of money. There are still a few that burn a ton of money <laughs> as an ecosystem, but that percentage of companies that are deeply unprofitable has come down dramatically, right? And that's because of all the actions that companies took in the March, April, May, June, July time frame. You know, one of the surprising things that I noticed in my ecosystem in, in this region, uh, in the Middle East, was that the quality of startup founders went up. Did you see something of that sort too? Like people will say, hey, what what else can go wrong? Let me try it out. What I've been no, thinking. Absolutely. I, I mean, look, I think every that's not just uh, in twenty twenty. Uh, PK, you know, uh, as you as you know, I mean, I moved uh, to India in two thousand and uh, two thousand and five. So I've been here fifteen years. It's been fourteen years since I did my first angel investment, right? Uh, two thousand and six, India in India, not in the US. Mm-hmm. So I mean, look, every year since I moved here, the quality of uh, founders has gone up. But I would say, especially in the last three or four years. It's sort of this really steep curve, right? If you had a quality curve, the quality of Indian founders starting up, it's just very steep. Uh, you know, every week I meet several dozen founders and I must say, I mean, the quality just keeps going up. I don't know, but it actually goes up every month. <laughs> you know, <laughs> season founders. There should be a quality index of sorts. Correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's, it's going up dramatically, which I think is the most positive thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, before we wind up this session, the quick, quick question I wanted to ask you was, like, what is it that you know, 2021 is going to bring for founders and what should they be kind of focusing on and any areas or for that matter, any kind of under, the kind of characteristics they should bring on the table. Like we always talk about, you know, the founders wanting to have empathy towards the customer, you know, the founders to have uh, coachability. And those are the kind of things we look at as investor hats on. What is the message for the founders, especially the product founders watching us today? Yeah, I think, look, I don't think these messages change uh, year to year, uh, right? I think these are sort of uh, evergreen 
uh, evergreen messages, right? Look, so what I would say, especially because where I where I focus my time, PK, is at seed stage. One, if you don't have product market fit, don't do anything mm-hmm. until you get to product market fit. Don't hire a lot of people. Don't try to draw sales. Don't try to, uh, you know, just find product market fit, right? And if you don't know how you're going to know whether you have product market fit or not, stop everything and figure out how will you define the venue actually know product market fit. That's number one. I think number two is, look, if you do have product market fit, you really should go for growth. But go for growth with strong unity promise, right? So with product founders, you know, strong, strong sort of gross margin, grow strong LTV to LTV to CAC and so on and so forth, right? Uh, so Rook, I, I'll end with this, right? Because uh, uh, you know, I see a lot of SaaS companies in India with a few million dollars of revenue, right? Uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with the T two D three framework, right? Triple oh. into triple into double into, right? Basically, and this is it. I mean, the, if you ask me. If, you've, if you're a SaaS founder, if you found product market fit, and let's say you're over a million dollars of ARR, which actually India now has you know, quite a number, or let's say you're at 500K or whatever, right? Let's say you're at 500, you started the year at 500K ARR, uh, PK, right? By the end of exit in December 2021, please get to about 2 million ARR. After 2 uh-huh. million ARR, it should be triple T3, T2, D3, okay? So what does that mean? 2 million, you have to triple 6 million, in one year, 6 million, you got a triple 18 million. After 18 million, you double for three years. 18, 36, 36, 72, 72, 140. That is what you should go for, right? And I think, you know, in many ways, you know, our SaaS companies in India, so far, uh, PK, have been very much in the 1990s India. You know, they're like... The question is, how do you get to 5 million ARR? Not go to 1 million, 2 million. Who cares? Yeah? I mean, nobody cares whether you go to 1 million, 2 million. No, I'm telling you. I mean, <laughs> nobody cares, right? So, and I think a lot of founders miss this point. So, once you find product market fit and you're really confident, you have a product that customers want, right? Go and build that GTM engine that can really help you scale fast. Awesome. I hope people remember this 1, D3, D2 model that you talked about. Thank you, Rajan. Thank you so much for all this insight. And I hope there'll be, I think your inbox is going to be full for a while. Thank you, Rajan. From NPC, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, PK.